I'm Peter Block at Anaheim, California at the AH Annual Meeting, and it is day two for On the Scene. On my left is Deepak Bot from the Brigham and Women's Hospital. Sorry, Deepak. And then on the far left, Kim Eagle from the University of Michigan. And we're here to review the day's trials and where we stand after day two. We've got two important trials today. Cantos was there a reduction of inflam inflammation after myocardial infarction and Gateway, a bariatric surgery study, one of my favorites. So Deepak, go with Cantos. Sure. I think it's a terrific study. It was presented at ESC, of course, with uh, great fanfare. But what was presented here, I think, is as important. It was really an analysis from Cantos looking at response to therapy. So just in case people have forgotten, Cantos examined the inflammation hypothesis, canakinumab, in coronary patients uh, to see if that anti-inflammatory drug would reduce ischemic events, which it did in the overall trial. Also an intriguing finding of reduced lung cancer uh, in the trial. But what was shown here were patients and their CRP response to canakinumab. Of course, you had to have an elevated CRP to get into the trial. But then those patients who had a significant reduction in CRP, in those folks, the drug seemed to work like gangbusters. That is, there was a reduction in all-cause mortality in those patients. So and You had to get to be less than two. That's correct. Yeah. So in those patients, it seems like if you had a response, you had a really great response. In the other patients, the response wasn't nearly so robust. So it does open the door uh, to potential really personalized therapy. And, and this drug, you know, we don't know what its approval status or cost would be, but in theory, one could envision a world where if it were approved, you give a dose, if the patient has a significant response, then you continue it, and if they don't, you stop it. And then you could really maximize benefit, uh, hopefully minimize harm and minimize cost. So it could be Kim, attractive. you're worried about the uh, Well, harm. yeah, so, you know, this, this drug uh, potentially can cause a uh, higher risk of infection. And in, in the first uh, study that was reported earlier, there was, I think, a doubling of fatal infections. And still is in this trial. There is, but yeah. the good news is that um, this trial suggests that the overall mortality and the cardiac mortality trumps that hazard, and, and so that certainly is good news. The other part that Deepak mentioned is that um, this, this response to the drug potentially allows us only to use it in patients who are going to respond and not use it in other patients. So then we get rid of that risk. Well, this is like uh, treating hypercholesterolemia, right? Give a statin. If your LDL goes down and uh, your total cholesterol goes down, you continue the statin. If not, look somewhere else. Yeah, and it's very common in the diabetes world where endocrinologists will start, say, a DPP-4 inhibitor. If there's not a good response, they won't just continue those expensive medicines. So, you know, that type of personalization, I think, makes a lot of sense. We don't do a lot of it in cardiovascular, but maybe we'll start. All right, let's move to bariatric surgery, since you just said uh, diabetes. Oh, right. Bariatric surgery in people with very high BMIs. Uh, Kim, give this one a shot. What do you think about hypertension and bariatric surgery? So this, Gateway was a, a randomized trial of a fairly small number of patients that were randomized to either bariatric surgery or typical medical therapy, and the primary endpoint was looking at blood pressure control. That was very interesting. The group that got bariatric surgery, half of the patients needed no antihypertensives after uh, the ruin y gastric procedure, which is an enormous benefit. And if they were it, all on two. And they were all on two or more, yeah. so. Uh, certainly gastric bypass surgery, for at least the short term, suggests that it has a big effect on blood pressure control. Yeah. And you know, I, I have a good friend who uh, is interested in this whole business of diet and whether or not diets long term can ever do anything. And uh, he says, you know, in the short run, bariatric surgery loses weight and that's where it ends. And so it seems that as an operation, for people who have very high BMIs, it's extraordinarily effective, even though some people do not necessarily get better, but by and large people do. And now with hypertension as a benefit, we're really home in a really nice way. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if you're worried about things like adherence, you can't beat the adherence that you get from a surgical procedure. That weight loss occurs. There's some uh, times a little bit of regain, but the more invasive the surgery, typically the more profound the weight loss. And you know, other studies such as Stampede have shown resolution of diabetes in a significant proportion of patients undergoing bariatric surgery. So you've got benefits on diabetes, benefits on high blood pressure, benef benefits on the lipids. It's a pretty good uh, risk factor reduction uh, modality. Does it make you better looking? <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's all in the eye of the boulder. Uh, 
Uh, you know, there have been, been Swedish yourself, studies though. suggesting benefit on mortality, too, yeah. studies that are much larger. Yeah, the I, observational work, you're right. Exactly right. I, I think the thing that's interesting about bariatric surgery is that the real benefit happens in patients who can find a level of discipline with movement and nutrition before they get the surgery. Good programs are requiring six months, a year, even a year and a half, demonstrate to me that you're not going to eat through the bypass surgery because you can eat around uh, bypass operation. We've all seen patients who do that. So this, this type of therapy, I think, makes the most sense in a very disciplined program that does that. You know, one last word, and I think that it's important to point out that in programs that do well with bariatric surgery, the key, like in coronary artery bypass graft surgery or in any other kind of cardiac surgery, is a good surgeon as well. This is not oh, yeah. a minor operation. Yeah, no, that's right. important, a really great point. And also, I think, Kim, the point you made about being in a program matters because, you know, there are nutritional deficiencies and other things that crop up here. So these patients need to keep being followed. Otherwise, you know, they could get vitamin deficient and then bad stuff can happen from that. Exactly. Okay, there we are. A good wrap-up of day two. <laughs>